Hey guys, this is the back glass replacement of the iPhone 12. As you can see, the back of this device is cracked. The first thing that I did was to try to replace only the glass out of the iPhone. So I tried to remove all the glass out of this device on the previous video and I was able to remove everything, but I knew that it wouldn't work because the frame was a little bit bent on the upper right of the device. So if you have a frame that is bent because it is aluminum, you cannot redo it and you will not be able to do the glass only replacement on your iPhone so I wouldn't let the device just sit like this the other option was to do a full frame replacement of this device doing a back glass replacement with the frame at the same time is going to give your device a new look the device is going to look brand new and most importantly the result is always going to be better than doing only a glass replacement the first thing that we need to do is to remove the two screws at the bottom of your iPhone and after that we need to remove the screen we need to remove the screen safely in order to not damage the screen in the process of doing the body swap. You can choose to turn the device off as I am doing this to show you how to do the tutorial. The device is still on. Let me say this, if you do the body swap on an iPhone once, you can do it on the iPhone 15, the iPhone 16, any iPhone in the future, you will be able to do the same thing. Before you start doing this, the body swap on an iPhone 12, make sure that you have at least three hours to do this properly. Depending on the experience that you have working on an Apple device you can do this as fast as possible about an hour i heated the screen of this device with the lowest setting on my heat gun i heated the front of the device for at least five minutes five minutes while moving the heat gun around the device and primarily directing the heat gun at the body of the device here the device is being held by a tool that i got from rewa tech this device has a broken screen the glass on the front of the screen is broken but the screen itself is good so if your screen doesn't have any cracks and your screen is good you just have to put your suction cup at the lower portion of the screen and start applying a little bit of pressure for the screen to start to separate from the body of the device you can take a look at my iphone 14 pro the iphone 13 pro and the iphone 12 pro screen replacement guide that i did right after i got the device delivered to me on those videos you're going to have a full instruction on how to remove a screen safely out of your iphone here the way the glass is broken doesn't allow me to have the suction cup at the bottom of the device and and start pulling and if i try to pull with the suction cup a little bit above the crack it is going to damage the screen the screen is going to get cracked and i will not be able to restore the screen later i will have the links to the screen replacement guide on the other iphones in the description after having an opening between the iphone and the body of the device i run my tool one of my guitar pick on all four corners and i was able to separate the screen from the body of the device also while inserting your tool between the screen and the body of the device make sure that you do not insert the guitar pick far inside the left of this iphone 12 is where we have all the flex cables if you put the tool far inside you risk to damage the cables after you remove the retaining plate that is held by two screws you can remove the battery cable first removing the battery cable should be done with your finger or a plastic tool after that you can remove the other two flex cables it is relatively easier to remove all the retaining plate like the one that i just removed and the other one that you removed earlier in order to to have access to the battery cable all the retaining plates removed disconnect the three flex cables that are coming from the screen and then remove the screen from the device next i decided to remove the battery removing the battery you can pull the pull tabs at the top of the battery and one at the bottom of the battery as always these things sometimes it does work sometimes it doesn't work here i was able to pull most of the sticky pull tabs at the top of the battery but after that it didn't do anything the battery is still held by the double-sided tape at the back of the battery so as always i went back to hitting the back of the device in order to remove the battery if the device did survive me hitting the back of the device trying to remove all the glass hitting the back of your device to soften the double-sided tape on the back of your battery is not going to damage anything you do need to keep moving the heat gun in order to avoid having too much heat on a single spot after the back of the device has been heated a little bit i inserted a plastic tool at the top of the device and started pulling as you can see we still have a lot of double-sided tape on the back of this battery and trying to pull it didn't do anything if the top of the battery already disconnected from the body of the device i just need to pull the battery and it will be removed from the inside of this device removing the screen was the first step removing the battery is the second step after those have been completed we can start the removal process of the screws and all the other components that you see inside your iphone 12. i started with the camera because that is the easiest thing that i can remove first the camera is held by a 
retaining plate that is held also by five screws. I thought the camera would be easy but as you can see I have one screw that is stripped. These screws are so small that it is very easy to strip them and as you can see I do not have anything else to do rather than breaking the retaining plate and removing the camera. There are some other ways to remove a stripped screw on a device. You can check the internet for those but for me I'm going to break the retaining plate and it is going to work as fine as finding a solution that can remove that screw. Hopefully you do not have any stripped screw or any stubborn screw while you're trying to remove component inside your iPhone 12. Next I remove two flex cables that are for the cameras and as you can see we have the camera out of the device. This iPhone 12 has only two camera modules. Every camera module has a single camera flex cable. So the next thing that I need to remove is the front facing camera and the face ID component that you can see at the top of the device. So here you can start removing or disconnecting all the flex cables that you have at the top of the device and after you have disconnected all those you can start the removal process of the camera module. Just take one of your tool and start pulling the camera module the face ID component slightly. Do not pull hard. Do not pull hard. Pull just slightly to have the face ID component to start to move. After you have done that you can track all the flex cables that are coming from the face ID component. I was able to track three cables and that is when I disconnected the third cable that was still attached to the motherboard. After that I saw that the third cable is kind of attached to a cable that goes to the flashlight. So that's when I removed the screw that are holding the flashlight component in order to remove the flashlight and the face ID third cable. Do you remember the screw that was stripped? So right now I have to remove it in order to access the flashlight. After carefully looking at the face ID component, I saw that the cable is not really attached but it is only slightly glued to the camera flashlight cable. So the face ID component has been removed. So right now I have a problem that you may not have if you were able to remove all the screw on your camera component. So at this moment I was trying to break that screw while using my metal tool but it is not working. So I took this plier. This this is the only plier that I have and I was trying to turn the screw slowly and was able to move it a little bit and after a while I was able to turn the screw by hand and remove it completely. This was not one screw but two screw in one. Next I'm removing the other screw that is holding the plastic that is covering the flashlight. I can now remove the flashlight plastic covering and then after that I can simply lift the flashlight out of the device. This is why I said do not pull anything with force inside this device. The flashlight is attached to another component that goes at the top of the device so there are some screws that needed to be removed before I can lift the flashlight out of the device. After the flashlight we can also remove this sensor at the same time. Next we need to disconnect the flex cables that are still on the top of the motherboard. If you have any other flex cable at the top of the motherboard disconnect them and start removing the screw that is holding the other component that I am removing right now. This type of body swap is not for the week. It is very difficult and you need to be organized while you're doing this type of repair. Make sure that you organize all your screws. The way I organize my things is I take the screw and place them in a position where they were removed out of a component. I then place the component on the center and make sure that everything is in the correct position. So I will not mix my screws while I reinstall everything inside the new body of the device. Also it is very easy to mix a thing that can cost you a component. So right now I have removed all the screws at the top of the device above the motherboard and I still cannot remove that component. So I started disconnecting all the other flex cables that are connected to the motherboard. This is what I have been doing in the last few minutes. At this moment I knew that the motherboard should be the next to be removed in order to access those components that are still inside the device. The motherboard is held by some screw at the top of the device and at the the bottom of the device. Unfortunately those screws are all different. Some are the same but it is not all the same. Here again you need to keep track of the screw that you remove out of the device and in order to remove the motherboard we need to remove the SIM card tray. So we are starting to remove the screw that are at the bottom of the SIM card tray and after the retaining plate removed we can start disconnecting the SIM card tray flex cables. So this was my first time doing a full body swap on the iPhone 12 and I can see that it is 
is a little bit challenging if you do not have the manual. So after I disconnected the flex cable of the SIM card tray, I tried to lift the motherboard slightly and it was not moving. My next step was to remove all the screws that are connected to the SIM card tray. Removing all those screws and removing the SIM card tray, I can see if there is something that I do not see that can help me removing the motherboard easily. At this moment, I thought I removed all the screws that were attached to the SIM card tray. I tried to lift the SIM card tray and it is not working. So there was one screw that I missed. After removing that, I can see the SIM card tray is out of the device. And I disconnected one of the flex cable that was below the SIM card tray. So that's when I saw that there was another flex cable that needed to be removed in order to access the motherboard. Again, do not pull anything hard. Just pull slightly and see if it moves. And I saw that I needed to remove also those screw at the right of the camera module. This whole thing at the right of the device is attached to the motherboard and cannot be separated from the motherboard. So if you damage that cable that connect the right side of the device to the motherboard, you do not have any option but to replace your motherboard. This is what I call the extreme or the ultimate anti-repair that Apple has created since the iPhone 12. So let's recap. You need to remove all the screws that you have at the top of the device near the camera module area. After that, you need to remove all the other screws that are near the power buttons. After you have removed all those screws that are on this flex cable, you need to disconnect that flex cable from the 5G antenna that is attached to the right side of the device. After all that, you need to lift that portion of flex cable slightly. Make sure that it is moving freely. Again, do not pull with any force, just pull slightly. And everything that I am about to do next, you should have done it before you remove that other component that is attached to the motherboard. You can see this cable below the motherboard. It should have been removed, disconnected before I started working on the right side of the device. And also at the top of the device, this plastic portion is covering a flex cable. This is the flex cable for the buttons at the left of the device. After you have removed that plastic portion, you can disconnect that flex cable. So I recommend that you remove or disconnect those two flex cables before you start removing the screws at the right of the device. It will make it more easier to remove the motherboard and a little bit safer. You can see the motherboard is no longer attached to the body of the device. And if everything has been disconnected and removed at the right of the device, we can lift the motherboard entirely out of the device. Apple is charging close to $400 for a back glass replacement. Do you think it's worth it? Try this and let me know in the comment box. Next, we need to remove that component that was at the top of the motherboard. You can see it has an extension that goes below the motherboard. In your case with the back glass, you need to apply a little bit of heat around that area and start to pull it slightly. You can see it is very fragile and it has a very thin flex cable connection. Make sure that you're careful while you're trying to remove it. I started moving at the bottom of the device in order to remove those components. I didn't remove the flex cable for the volume buttons and the flex cable for the wireless charging. Those are already installed in the body that I purchased for this iPhone 12. Also, this is a recommendation. If you have to purchase a body of your iPhone 12, make sure that you get the one with the small component installed. You will not have to remove those small components out of your iPhone body and it is going to save you a little bit of time in the removal of the bottom portion of your iPhone. You can get the body of your iPhone 13, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 14 with a small component already installed. The bottom portion also is a little bit tricky. You need to remove all the screws and organize them. After you have removed all the components, you will be left with the cable that has the charging module attached on it and other small components. So right now I thought I removed everything and I was able to slide my tool at the bottom of the device in order to start the separation between the flex cable and the body. I recommend that you do not proceed that way and start to remove the screws that you see me removing right now. And after you have removed all those screws, make sure that you check again to make sure that you didn't miss any screw that is still attaching one of those components to the board. After the four screws holding the charging port has been removed, you can see the charging port is moving slightly now. So here again, I try to pull the charging module slightly and it is moving but not completely. So I looked and saw that there was one more screw that I didn't remove. After I removed that screw, I started to pull again to see if it is going to move and completely be removed out of the device. You can see this component is attached and glued to the body of the device and I needed to pull it in order to have it completely disconnected. The component I'm working on right now is of orange color. That one also needed to be removed because it is attached directly to 
to the body of the device by double sided tape. If you saw the first video, you know why this component is broken and it is still attached to the body of the device. Hitting a little bit the bottom of the device can help removing those components that are glued to the body of the device. This is the pin that goes before the SIM cartridge. We need to install that pin inside the new body of this iPhone 12 before we can start the reinstallation of all the other components. I decided to go white in the back and the body of this device instead of the original red color. If you want a different color on your iPhone 12, this is the best way to have a different iPhone color. They did put some camera protecting film on the camera glass on the inside. While you're trying to remove them, be careful because you can leave some scratch on your camera glass while you're trying to remove it. The wireless charging coil that they provided does have MagSafe. It is equipped with magnet. I will be starting the reinstallation of the components with the bottom of the device. Place the charging module of this iPhone 12 inside the body of the device and after that you need to adjust the position of the component at the right and the left of the device. Obviously I will have to replace mine because one of the microphone is broken. That is the yellow stuff that was around that area on the body of the device. So I will replace this later. Reinstall everything in the reverse order that you saw me removing it. I did reinstall everything inside the new body of the device and left only the important stuff. The only thing that is missing is the 5G antenna. I didn't show you how to remove it and we are going to do it right now. This 5G antenna is attached by double sided tape on the back to the body of the device. You need to hit the body of the device on the outside directly where the 5G antenna is located. Hit that area for 10 seconds. Apply a little bit of pressure on the bottom portion of the 5G antenna for it to come out of that slot. If it doesn't work, hit again for 10 seconds and go back to that bottom portion of the 5G antenna. Apply a little bit of pressure for it to come out of that slot. The pressure should be applied at the bottom portion of the 5G antenna where we do not have a flex cable connection. The first thing that I installed was the charging module at the bottom of the device. After that, I did install the Wi-Fi antenna at the top of the device. After those, I then installed the motherboard of this device. After the motherboard, I installed the SIM card tray. After the SIM card tray, I started the installation of the front facing camera component. After those, I installed the back or rear camera. And after that, I did install the screen of the device, the screen and the battery. As I said in the beginning of this video, the screen glass is broken. So I will be doing a screen glass only replacement on this iPhone 12. I tested everything. Everything is working flawlessly. There is no problem with this device after I transferred all the components from the red iPhone body into this white iPhone body. So at this point, we need to reinstall the battery of this device. Reinstallation of the battery, you need some new double sided tape. After the double sided tape has been installed, we can put the battery inside the body of the device. Put the battery inside the device. Make sure that you do not connect the battery. After that, you need to install a new double sided tape on the body of the device that is going to seal the screen and the body of the device together. Next, you're going to connect the speaker flex cable at the top of the motherboard. You go to the middle of the motherboard and install the two screen flex cables. After those has been completed, remove the plastic film that is covering the double sided tape before you close the device. Close the screen on the body of the device and start to apply some pressure around your screen for it to stick onto the body of the device. If you have some repair clamps, you can apply the repair clamps on the screen. It is going to keep a constant pressure on your screen for it to stick onto the body of the device. If you do not have pressure clamps, it is alright. You can just close the device, apply some fingerprint pressure all around your device and it is done. Click on the screen for the glass only replacement on the iPhone 12. As of me, I think both methods are difficult. I do recommend that if you want the best result for your repair, you need to transfer all your components from the old body into the new body. This is going to give you the best result compared to doing a glass only replacement. Subscribe, like and share and I will see you next time.